the Euclid Space Telescope just dropped a brand new image. Absolutely gorgeous, right? But hold on there a sec. What's that right there in the center? Now that's unusual. Wait a second, is that a ring? They're calling it the Altieri lens. And whilst this galaxy NGC 6505 has been known since 1884, somehow we're only just noticing this now. How did we miss something so incredible for over a century? Hey Space Cats, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Maggie Lou, and in this week's video, we're diving into the Altieri lens and what it reveals about our universe. Euclid's space mission is a mission to better understand dark energy and dark matter by creating the largest 3D map of the universe. It's measuring the shapes of billions of galaxies, some as far away as 10 billion light years away, to figure out how dark matter is distributed and how our universe is expanding. Now, the reason that Euclid is interested in galaxy shapes isn't because it's scouting locations for the next luxury space colony, which, let's be real, a spiral galaxy penthouse would be quite nice. Instead, it's because warped galaxies hold the secrets to dark matter and dark energy. Gravitational lensing happens when a massive object like a galaxy or a galaxy cluster, which we call the lens, bends the light from something even further away, which we call the source. This can make distant objects appear distorted, magnified, or even multiply imaged in the sky. Einstein's general relativity explains this. Gravity isn't just a force pulling things together, but a curvature in the fabric of space-time caused by mass. Massive objects warp space-time, and light follows that warping in those curves. So when light passes a massive object, its path bends. In strong gravitational lensing, the light bending is so strong that it can even produce multiple images of distant objects. Strong lensing acts like a natural telescope, magnifying the light from the distant objects, making them easier to see, so that we can see galaxies that are much fainter and farther away than we could see otherwise. In weak gravitational lensing, the distortions are much more subtle, and you need to make statistical averages over many, many galaxies to even detect that curvature in space-time. And then the last type of gravitational lensing is microlensing, when the light from a distant star or planet is briefly magnified by an unseen object. Euclid's main focus is for weak gravitational lensing, which lets us map out the invisible dark matter itself. But about two years ago, whilst visiting ESAC in Madrid, I got a message from my old boss and collaborator at ESA, Bruno Altieri, who is also the Euclid archive scientist, which means that basically he's in charge of all the archival data. Bruno had discovered the Altieri lens. The Altieri lens is an Einstein ring. It's a stunning example of strong gravitational lensing. This happens when a distant object, a massive foreground object, and the observer, which is us here on the Earth, are perfectly aligned. The light from the distant object doesn't just bend, it forms a complete ring around the massive lensing object. But here's the catch. Perfect Einstein rings are incredibly rare. While gravitational lensing often produces arcs or partial rings, a flawless circle requires everything to line up just perfectly in place, not just in position, but also in distance. Even if you get it slightly off, you'll get distorted rings or other features. That level of precision is almost unheard of, making discoveries like the Altieri lens extra special. The four bright spots that we see in this ring are all images of that same galaxy, a galaxy that was found to be at a redshift of Z equals 0.406, which is 4.4 billion light years away. The galaxy is magnified by a foreground galaxy, NGC 6505, at a redshift of 0.042. That's the lens, and it's just 590 million light years away. 
Now, this is quite unusual because it's really close. It's so surprising that we saw it at all because at low redshift, the volume of the universe is relatively small compared to that of high redshifts at further distances, especially seeing it so early on in the Euclid observations. And to be honest, even the most powerful ground-based telescope wouldn't be able to see this ring. Earth's atmosphere would blur and distort the image beyond recognition. Einstein's rings offer unique advantages that make them stand out in astrophysics. The symmetry of the ring provides more accurate models of the lensing mass than other strong lensing cases, like simple arcs. The ring's shape and size tells us about the distribution of dark matter in the lensing galaxy or galaxy cluster with high precision. Einstein rings also provide some of the strongest evidence of general relativity by showing that light follows curved spacetime exactly as predicted. Comparing observed lensing effects with theoretical models, we can then test for possible deviations from Einstein's equations, which could hint at new physics. The publication on this finding, which I'll link down below, models the lens galaxy light and the strongly lensed images, finding that the ring has a radius of 2.5 arc seconds. The equation of the Einstein radius is this where g is the gravitational constant, m is the mass of the lens, c is the speed of light, and all those different d values are the relative distances between the lens, the source, and the observer. Now, since the Einstein ring radius is proportional to the square root of the mass, increase the lensing mass directly increases the Einstein radius. This is why galaxy clusters, which contain huge amounts of dark matter, will produce huge Einstein rings, sometimes tens of arc seconds wide. Individual galaxies, like NGC 6505, create smaller rings because they have far less total mass. The Einstein radius also depends on distance. If the lens is closer, the Einstein radius is larger because the bending effect is stronger. If the lens is further away, the light spreads out more, resulting in a smaller Einstein radius. Since the gravitational lensing measures all mass, both visible and dark matter, Einstein rings are a great way to map how dark matter is distributed in the galaxies and the clusters that are doing the lensing. In this particular case, the well-formed ring in NGC 6505 suggests a smooth mass distribution, meaning its dark matter halo is likely very well structured rather than clumpy. Now, using the Einstein radius and distance measurements, the mass of the lens galaxy is estimated to be about 1.5 times 10 to the 11 solar masses. The 2.5 arc second Einstein ring is quite small compared to the effective radius of the galaxy, which is about 12.3 arc seconds based on the amount of light in the galaxy. This tells us that the lensing signal comes from the very central part of the galaxy, where the mass concentration is the highest. By comparing the mass enclosed within the Einstein radius calculated from lensing to the mass calculated from the galaxy's luminous matter in the same like um, area using photometry from stars, the researchers found that they couldn't account for about 11% of the total mass. This means that only 11% of the mass inside the Einstein radius is due to dark matter. What does this mean for NGC 6505? Well, it means that the central region is mostly stars, with only a small contribution of the mass coming from dark matter. Now, this isn't too surprising. In many galaxies, stars will dominate within the inner Einstein radius, while dark matter only becomes more significant further out we look. However, the 11% dark matter fraction is actually relatively low compared to what's typically found in massive elliptical galaxies, which has implications for our understanding of galaxy formation and evolution. It seems like the inner regions of massive elliptical galaxies form differently than their outer regions, possibly through mergers of smaller galaxies. These mergers would build up the stellar core, while dark matter is distributed more diffusely in the outer halo of the galaxy. In other words, NGC 6505's lensing ring isn't just a pretty space illusion, but it allows us to see how galaxies grow and evolve over time.
Even though Euclid isn't specifically designed to look for objects like this one, the 609 megapixel camera on board is what allows Euclid to capture very sharp images of galaxies, very high resolution images, revealing the details in their shapes and structures. It's this resolution that made the discovery of this lens possible. Now Euclid will observe a huge amount of the sky, 14,000 square degree, and pretty deep observations too. This means that potentially Euclid will see more than 100,000 new strong gravitational lenses over its planned mission time of six years. In fact, here are some other strong lenses that have already been discovered in Euclid's early release observations. Here, they used a combination of human visual inspection and computer modeling to find them. The 41 expert human classifiers inspected over 12,000 images and found three grade A and 13 grade B lens candidates. And these examples have been used to train an AI model to find even more lenses in the massive Euclid dataset. Euclid's early success hints at even more amazing discoveries to come. But that's all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe. Bye.